Good morning to all of you, my brothers and sisters. Good morning, DCI Church. Uh, I presume you can all hear me. Right? Excellent. Uh, well, we have been uh, sort of uh, recapturing some of those uh, needs, those notifications from the government uh, with regards to uh, the shutdown, the lockdown, and to remain isolated. Uh, and I was just noticing uh, a video, uh, I mean, a documentary, which said that when we do this, there can also be other repercussions. When people are isolated, they can also uh, slip into, you know, emotional situations like depression, especially if you're all alone. And so um, perhaps I can just encourage you all that as we maintain uh, and practice uh, social distancing, we can also practice what we can call distant socializing. And that is what we are doing now, right? Uh, so be connected, um, even though we need to isolate ourselves, but we don't have to be completely shut off from one another. And I encourage anyone who may be struggling uh, with this kind of isolation to pick up the telephone and call and be connected with loved ones, with friends, and with church members. And uh, if my wife and I can help you in any way, uh, we are always there to be available for you. Okay. Well, I was just noticing that uh, hearing... Uh, you know, the prayers that were offered by David and Sachin, uh, the messages that came from Dr. Elizabeth and Joshila. Uh, I noticed that there seemed to be a theme today and the theme is fear and how we can uh, overcome that sense of fear. Just going back to the scripture that was read for us, I will pick up verse 33 of John 16, where Jesus says something very significant. He says, I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble, but take heart, I have overcome the world. Now the context of this, when you go back to even verse 1, Jesus was announcing the end of his earthly ministry. He was coming to a point in time where he would have to leave all his disciples and he would not be present physically. He was helping them understand that he had to go back to the Father so that he could send the Spirit and of course the work of the triune God continues uh, as the Spirit dwells in us. But in this period of time before his second coming, he warns of troubles. He warns of persecutions as we were read from John, John 16. He specifically mentioned that it is not easy to retain our faith when we go through various kinds of trials and tribulations in this world. There could even come a point in time, there could be a temptation to fall away and leave the faith. So, so he is bringing these thoughts so that the disciples would be ready to face various kinds of uh, uh, difficulties and trials in life. And certainly the disciples were in grief. They were not sure what would happen after Jesus leaves. And if you look at that context in which Jesus mentioned those things, uh, perhaps we can look at our own context today. Uh, isn't, isn't it something similar? Uh, we are living in a, a sense of uncertainty. Uh, we wonder if life will be normal. Uh, some are saying that after this pandemic is over, uh, life may not necessarily come back to normal because of various stresses that the whole world is going through because of this. And one of the things that we will struggle with is fear. And fear, which was already mentioned in your prayers and in your short exhortations. Uh, and, I, and in one sense, even as the coronavirus begins to 
spread its you know tentacles all over the world there is also another virus which we can call fear that is spreading right and fear invades our hearts and it makes us anxious and one of the things it does is it robs our peace some use fear unfortunately to intimidate to manipulate to strike terror in the hearts of people and i and i'm sure we know that our arch enemy that is satan the devil uses this fear to bring all kinds of social anxiety in us that affects relationships and so i would also like to spend just you know a few moments uh, that uh, that has to deal with fear as christians how should we react to fear uh, how do we react to the uncertainties in this world because we have to live in a world that has these troubles you know as jesus himself said in this world you will have trouble and so we can't leave this world physically speaking and go off somewhere else so we have to live in this world and so fear becomes a natural reaction and it is natural for us to have some sense of fear um but as long as we live in this world let's once again ask that question how do we handle this fear factor in life and that is where jesus brings this these reassuring words when he says in john 16 and verse 33 i have told you these things he says so that in me you may have peace jesus promises us that in him we can experience peace so what is it what is he trying to tell us he's telling us that while we live in a world with troubles which brings fear we must also live in him which brings peace so uh we can't leave this world and we are buffeted by fear all around but we can experience a peace that he gives to us uh so as we live in this world we have to ask the question how can we also live in christ so that we can experience the peace that jesus christ gives to us so how do we live in christ and that is what i'll spend just a few moments uh discussing and for that i want to go to the book of second corinthians and in chapter 5 just want to read you a few verses from second corinthians chapter 5 beginning in verse 17 uh, it says therefore if anyone is in christ the new creation has come the old has gone the new is here that's how it reads in the new international version but let me read to you from also the new american standard bible the same verse second corinthians 5 verse 17 in in the nasb says therefore if anyone is in christ he is a new create uh, a new creature if anyone is in christ he is a new creature the old things have passed new things have come that is one thing we need to keep in mind we jesus is helping us to understand that while we live in him we have also become a new creation which means to say our minds has now been renewed we have a new perspective to life we must have a new outlook and this new outlook must give us new hope it must help us to have a new focus uh and as we do that this is how we live in christ that we can adopt a new perspective a new focus adopt a new hope even while we live in a world full of troubles right and as we do that obviously we are also looking ahead to a glorious new future so this in christ this life in christ will is moving towards 
the finality and the fullness of the kingdom that Jesus Christ has already inaugurated. So we have to ask the, another question. What is this new mind? What is this new focus we must have? How can we experience this peace that Jesus gives to us while we live in a world that, has full of, that is full of troubles? And for that, let me go to Romans chapter 8. I will read a verse which we have read many a times before. Romans chapter 8, I'm beginning to read from verse 35. And I'm going to go to read right up to verse 39. We are asking the question, what is this new mind we must have? What is this new perspective we must have? Because in Christ, we must have this new, new outlook. Romans 8 verse 35 begins by saying, who will separate us from the love of Christ? Will tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? Just as it is written, for your sake, we are being put to death all day long. We are considered as sheep to be slaughtered. If I pause there for a moment, notice that is what we face in this world. Distress, tribulation, you know, peril, the fear of death, right? This, this is the troubles that we face while we live in this world. But we have hope as we read in verse 37. But in all these things, we overwhelmingly conquer through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing will be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus. Once again, notice. We face many trials. We face many difficulties. But there is something very special when we remain in Christ, when we live in Christ. Though we face these troubles, we, are, we know we are not separated from God. That's the point I want to just re, uh, focus on and reiterate a little bit more strongly. Remember, we are not separated from God. Though we try, we go through these troubles, those troubles cannot separate us from the love of God, from the love that God has for us. And so when we understand and know that God loves us, we conquer all fears. We conquer the ultimate fear of separation from God. That is the fear that the world in, and many people trouble, are troubled by, you know, on many occasions. Uh, we conquer this fear by focusing on the love of God that Jesus Christ, that we have in Jesus Christ. In other words, the problems we face are not bigger than God or God's love for us. The troubles may be great, but they are certainly not bigger than the love God has for us. So when we understand that, when we recognize we are not separated from God's love, God has not left us. God is not distant from us. We experience peace when we know that God is bigger than all of us. I will read you one more uh, verse uh, in the same chapter, uh, Romans 8 and verse 1. It says, Therefore, there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Notice that. There is no condemnation in Christ. While we live in Christ, no troubles, no trials, no tribulation can condemn us. Nothing can separate us and condemn us and take us away from Christ. In Christ, like it says, there is no condemnation. Like I said a little while ago, the greatest fear that most of us have is eternal separation from God. On many occasions, I have, as I have counseled people, uh, one of the things that I have been asked repeatedly, if they have committed the unpardonable sin. People are so fearful. If they have done something to lose salvation, if they have committed a sin which God can never forgive. But that is not true. Nothing can condemn us. As long as we will remain in Christ, 
And that's why Jesus Christ says, though we have trouble in this world, in Christ, we have peace. And what kind of peace can we experience? One more last verse. I will read Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 7. God describes the peace. The apostle here describes the peace that we can experience, though we have troubles in the world and the fear that comes along with it. Ephesians 4 and verse 7 says, And the peace of God, which surpasses all comprehension, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. When we are in Christ Jesus, we have a new mind. We have a new focus. And what is the new focus we must have? We must always remember we can never be separated from God as long as we remain in Christ. And when we do that, that peace that God gives to us indeed will surpass all comprehension. It will never condemn us. It will bring us closer and closer to him and to one another as brothers and sisters of Christ. Thank you for listening. God bless you all.